Hello all, back again. I hope you remember some of your multivariable calculus and plotting parametric functions because we got a fun exercise today. The statement reads, find and sketch the trajectory of the particle in cycloid motion if it starts at the origin with the following velocities. Things to know for this question. The general solution of the equations of a cycloid are given as follows. These are coupled equations, so that's why C2 and C1 are as such. And the cyclotron frequency is defined as omega equal QB over M. All right, so a general landscape of this before we get started on our exact solutions is that we have, in each case, a set of boundary or initial values given for each scenario with a starting location and a starting velocity. We've seen these boundary value problems in the last two or three chapters, so we should be pretty quick with them. All right, so for scenario A, this says that our starting position at y equals zero and z equals zero is zero, or the origin. And the velocity in the y direction is e over b. The velocity in the z direction is zero, at time equals zero. All right, so now we need to find the constants of our uh, general solutions and we can do that by plugging in zero to the y equation and setting that all equal to zero. When we do this, we see that the cosine cancels to one, the sine cancels to zero, the e over b term times t cancels to zero, and we're simply left with um, c1 plus c3 equals zero. Similarly, we can plug in zero for the z equation and set it equal to zero, and we get the uh, same cancellations with the sine and cosine, and we yield C2 plus C4 equals zero. Got that summarized below. Uh, now we get to the fun part where we set the velocities, or the y dot, so we have to take the derivative with respect to time of the y general solution equation and set it equal to what the problem gave us. So doing so, we just take the derivative and plug in zero, Again, sine and cosine cancels pretty evenly, or pretty easily, rather. And then uh, since in this particular case, our y velocity at zero was equal to eb, we have to set it equal to eb, and we see that we get some cancellations of that term, leaving us with c2 equals zero. Um, similarly, for the z term, we get that c1 equals zero. Putting those together with the uh, relations we just found from the position equations, yields uh, C1 plus C3 equals zero, so C3 equals zero. Similarly, C2 plus C4 equals zero yields C4 equals zero. Now all we have to do is plug those back into the original prototype of the equations of the uh, general solution, and we see that we are left with Y of T is equal to E over B times T, and Z of T is equal to zero. Um, this indicates that we're traveling in a straight line, by the way, and this should make sense given that the magnetic force is Q times V cross B, which simplifies down to negative QE. Uh, this simply shows that the uh, electric force cancels with the magnetic force, thus there is no net force, and that shows that the particle moves in a straight line, looking from the force perspective, at a constant speed. And that's what's reflected in the equations. All right, so now for scenario B, we get the gist of how to solve these, so we'll just kind of expedite the process. Uh, so taken from results from A, we see that Y of zero equals Z of zero equals zero, as given in the context. Um, we know that the relations for those are C3 equal negative C1 and C4 equal negative C2. Uh, so now the tricky part is plugging in the velocity equations correctly. Uh, for the z equation, uh, we get that z dot equals zero. The dot notation, by the way, just represents the time derivative. Um, and we see that we get a uh, <coughs> constant one, or c1 equals zero here, thus implying that c3 equals zero. Uh, so that makes life easy. But for the y velocity, we have to set that all equal to e over 2b. And then uh, we see that that all simplifies down to C2 equal negative E over two omega B. Uh, and from the relationship we found with the position coordinates, we know that that's equal to negative C4. 
so now we just have to back uh, substitute these into the uh, prototype equation and we see that y of t is equal to e over 2 omega b times 2 omega t minus sine omega t. Uh, note that we had to include a 2 omega t on the t term itself in order to have that factor pulled out. You'll see why in a second. And then for the z equation, again, we had that factor of e over 2 omega b factored out, but this is now 1 minus cosine omega t, which again kind of makes sense because we see that these equations are coupled, so they kind of look like the derivative of one another. Um, okay, so now to see what this thing actually looks like in motion. To understand the trajectory of this, let beta equal e over 2 omega b, just for simplicity's sake. <clears throat> then we know that y is equal to negative beta sine omega t plus beta 2 omega t. We're going to solve this for the sine term. You might already see where we're going with this using the uh, Pythagorean identity. And similarly for z, we'll solve that for the cosine term. We'll square both sides of it and add them together as such. And we see that after some simplification, we get the sine and the cosine canceling to 1 thanks to that identity. And we get that this whole thing is equal to beta squared. This implies that the motion of this is a circle of radius beta whose center moves on the to the right at a constant speed, uh, given that it is centered at y naught and z naught equals such. These are reflected in the graphs to follow. Uh, for situation C now, again, we have uh, carryover from the last two. The only thing that differs here is that we have a velocity component in the y and z equation, so we have to account for that. Again, the positional equations give us the relation between C3 and C1, C4, and C2. Uh, so we know that y dot yields um, a cancellation term since the factor E over B is there, and they cancel out with one another, leading us to C2 equals 0, which implies C4 equals 0. Uh, but in the z direction, that's not true. We have a we see here that c1 equal negative e over epsilon or not epsilon over omega b equals negative c3. So plug those in. We factor out an e over omega b and uh, simplify that down. The z equation is pretty simple. We like that. Um, and then using a similar method to find the trajectory, we just let beta equal e over uh, omega b do the same methodology and we see that we have a circle of radius beta again. Uh, this time the uh, starting position or the center is at z naught equals zero and, be and y naught equal beta times one plus omega t. Um, now let's go look at the graphs of these real quick. Uh, for b we see that it we, we are on the y-axis moving like a wheel would and we're just tracing the point of it, uh, as stated in the description. Uh, but in C, we see that we have something that undulates up and down due to the Z velocity field that we started with. Again, similar types, but now we're fluctuating between plus beta and minus beta due to the Z and Y velocities given sine and cosine initial velocity components. But yeah, pretty quick. Uh, this analysis is not uncommon for these problems, and we'll definitely see more of it as we get into the interplay of the electric and the magnetic field.